The following presentation will provide an overview of the Wisconsin Educator Effectiveness System. In addition, as advocates for our members, we will identify directions we can take to help support them in the implementation of this statewide initiative. PI 34 and the PDP. Where we are at today really began in 1993 with the development of what would become PI 34. WEAC members from around the state helped build a process linked to research-based standards for effective teacher practice. With full implementation of PI 34 in 2004 and the use of the PDP for licensing, teachers for the first time were in control of their professional development and were able to link professional work directly to their students and classrooms. Since 1993, state and federal funding for education has continually diminished. In 2010, the federal government offered states $4 billion in grant funding for educational programming through Race to the Top. To qualify for this grant, states were required to tie student achievement in a significant way to teacher and principal evaluation. That requirement became linked to another already existing national movement for standardized curriculum. Standardized curriculum led to a new generation of student assessments and teacher evaluation tied to student achievement will clearly be impacted by changing assessments. CCSS, the Common Core State Standards, are an effort to improve and standardize student expectations. Wisconsin was among 46 states that have adopted the Common Core Standards for Language Arts and Math. The new standards will require new assessments, which will be ready for implementation in the fall of 2014. The reason for adoption of the Common Core was simple. Assessments under the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, ESEA, must be aligned with national standards. Other policy initiatives and practices impact teachers and documentation of student learning and behaviors. Some of them are Specific Learning Disabilities, SLDs. By December 1, 2013, in order for students to qualify as having a specific learning disability under state and federal law, IEP teams must document progress monitoring of general education interventions. Testing that shows a significant discrepancy will no longer qualify students under the federal program for funding. This intervention framework in general education is otherwise known as R. RTI, and only through documentation of a response to intervention, RTI, will students qualify for special education services for learning disabilities. PBIS, Positive Behavior Intervention Strategies, are practices, not policy, but are used in Wisconsin schools to address student behaviors. Wisconsin's ESEA waiver application links teacher and principal evaluation to student achievement and measures of professional practice and has developed into what we now know as EE, Educator Effectiveness, a statewide computer-linked assessment tool for students known as the SBA, Smarter Balanced Assessment, will track the new Smarter Balanced data. In 2010, DPI formed a collaborative educator design team. The team was made up of a variety of key stakeholders in education. WEAC had representation on that team. The design team developed a framework that included the following. A system for continuous improvement, leading to student success, based on a fair and reliable process that includes multiple measures of both teacher and student performance. From this framework grew a core set of guiding principles. An educator evaluation system must deliver information that guides effective educational practice that is aligned with student learning and development, documents evidence of effective educator practice, documents evidence of student learning, informs appropriate professional development, informs educator preparation programs, supports a full range of human resource decisions, is credible, valid, reliable, comparable, and uniform across districts. Work groups used these guiding principles as they crafted the educator practice and student performance components of the Educator Effectiveness Program. Amendments to Wisconsin State Statute 
2.415 mandate that teachers and administrators in public schools, including charters, be evaluated under a state-developed model of educator effectiveness. Teacher evaluation is split into two parts. 50% of teacher evaluation will be based on teacher practice, the art of teaching and teaching standards, and 50% on student outcomes based on multiple measures. To qualify for the ESEA waiver, the educator effectiveness system needed to focus not only on teacher practice, but principal practice as well. DPI chose the Charlotte Danielson model for the educator effectiveness system. There are four domains in the Danielson model that are further broken down into multiple components. While Danielson's model has been adopted as the state's framework, equivalent models may also be approved by DPI. DPI chose to use the Interstate School Leaders Licensure Consortium Standards for principal practice, which is in concert with the PI 34 standards for school administrators. Within the 50% of the evaluation pie tied to student outcomes, WEAC advocated successfully that evaluations must consist of multiple measures of student performance. Teachers will be required to write one or more student learning objectives. These objectives will be developed by the teacher and their administration. SLOs must meet the SMART criteria, which includes being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. From guiding principles to educator practice, the DPI rolled out an educator effectiveness timeline that attempts to capture those guiding principles. Small pilot groups are underway and training for additional districts is planned for the spring and the summer of 2013. Full implementation is planned for the 2014-15 school year. Knowledge is power. Be sure you understand and control your own professional growth through your professional development plan and the new educator effectiveness system. Manage your knowledge. Know your part in these initiatives and know the role of the district as well. Ask questions such as, will your evaluator be properly trained and certified? And how will you know what training is required? The core components of many of these initiatives overlap do not view them as separate silos. Think about how you can incorporate some new education concept under the Common Core State Standards into an SLO goal. When you assess for progress on your SLO goals and you find some of your students may be falling behind, use the RTI framework to intervene with these students. Use the goals you write and student performance data you collect for educator effectiveness work in your own professional development plan for licensure renewal. Work smart. Know that the DPI does not condone high-stakes decisions based on this model. You can find these notices throughout DPI resources and presentations. Be sure you understand if and how your compensation and working conditions may be impacted by these changes, and if there are issues, be sure to contact your local leadership. What can you do from here? Work with your local to plan activities around educator effectiveness. Team up with your colleagues to better understand the system, write goals together, and plan your PDPs together. Let us know how your Uniserve and WEAC office can help. Remember, this is about the opportunity to take charge of your profession.